In this video, we will study about the growth and the development of the placenta, classification of the placenta and the placental circulation. First, we will see about the growth of the placenta. In the first half of the pregnancy, the placenta increases both in the surface area and in thickness. The increase in thickness is due to the elongation of the stem villi and not by the destruction of the uterine wall. In the second half of the pregnancy, it increases only in surface area and not in thickness. So when you see the development, the placenta is developed from two sources, the fetal part from the chorion frondosum. So this is a chorion frondosum, the maternal part which arises from the decidua basalis. When the blastocyst is embedded in the endometrial wall of the uterus, the endometrium is changed into decidua due to the decidual reaction of the stromal cells. The decidua consists of decidua basalis, then you have the decidua capsularis and then you have the decidua parietalis. The decidua basalis is situated at the embryonic pole of the blastocyst and the capsularis envelops the rest of the blastocyst and the parietalis lines the uterine cavity. The syncytiotrophoblast proliferates into multi-layered and multi-nucleated protoplasmic mass and advances towards the decidua basalis and capsularis by proteolytic action. Meanwhile, the cytotrophoblast differentiate internally into a layer of primary mesodom. The trophoblast along with the primary mesodom together form the chorion. Number of lacunar spaces appear within the syncytiotrophoblast around the entire chorionic wall but more so towards the decidua basalis. Each lacuna communicates with the adjacent one around the cord of syncytial cells which are now known as the Trabiculae. So, this is the trabiculae, sensational trabiculae. The lacuna enlarge and they erode the branches of the uterine artery and the uterine vein. Therefore, the lacunae are now filled with the maternal blood, establishing uteroplacental circulation. Now, the trabiculae, so this is the trabiculae, so this trabiculae is converted into primary chorionic villi by the invasion of the cytotrophoblast in the central axis of each trabicula. The lacunar spaces are now called as intervillous spaces. At the tips of the primary villi, the cells of the cytotrophoblast spread outward within the substance of the syncytiotrophoblast and forms the outer cytotrophoblastic shell. The trophoblastic invasion into the decidua basalis grow more deeply at the tips of the stem villi by their continued elongation. As a result, the portion of the basal plate in between the stem villi project into the intervillous space as the placental septum. Now what happens? The primary mesodermal cells of the chorion they invade the central axis of the primary villi and they convert the primary villi into secondary villi. The cells of the primary mesodom extend up to the distal end of the villi and they do not form the outer wall of the intervillous space. The secondary villi is converted into tertiary villi when the fetal blood vessels derived from the umbilical vessel appear within the primary mesodom. Therefore, all the tertiary villi are vascular. From each tertiary villus, 
numerous branching villi they project into the intervillous space converting the intervillous space into labyrinthine structure the chorionic villi attach to the embryonic pole of the blastocyst proliferate more rapidly and they are called as the chorion frondosum the rest of the chorionic villi of the ab embryonic pole they degenerate and they disappear and they are known as chorion leave during the third month of the pregnancy the decidua capsularis and the decidua parietalis are fused with the regression of the chorion leave as a result the persistent chorion frondosum and the decidua basalis together form the human placenta next we'll see the classification of the placenta according to the attachment of the umbilical cord the placenta are classified as battle door placenta when the umbilical cord is attached close to the margin of the placenta it is called as battle door placenta then the velamentous placenta when the cord fail to reach the placenta and it is attached to the fetal membrane close to the periphery of the organ so this is the velamentous placenta according to the site of implantation it is classified into placenta previa this condition takes place when the blastocyst is implanted into the lower part of the uterine cavity overlapping the internal os of the cervix this produces serious hemorrhage before parturition the placenta previa may be central or marginal next you have the accessory placenta sometime an accessory lobe of placenta that is sussenturata placenta sussenturata is connected to the main mass by the fetal membrane according to the degree of adhesion or penetration the placenta is classified into placenta accreta when it is adhered pathologically to the decidua basalis then you have the placenta increta when it penetrates the myometrium and then you have the placenta percreta when it penetrates the entire uterine wall according to the shape you have a lobed placenta it may exhibit two or more lobes and then you have the placenta membranacea it is diffuse and thin and the chorionic villi project from the entire blastocyst cavity then you have the circumvallate placenta the peripheral margin of the placenta is surrounded by a sulcus and it is overlapped by the circular fold of decidua according to the distribution of the umbilical arteries it is classified into dispersed type and magistral type the dispersed type the umbilical artery they divide in dichotomous manner and they undergo successive reduction in caliber whereas in the magistral type the arteries maintain almost a uniform caliber up to the periphery of the placenta and they give off number of smaller side branches according to the tissues forming the placental barrier the placenta may be classified phylogenetically as the epithelio corial which is found in the pig here the endometrial epithelium remain intact and the fetal and the maternal tissue come in direct contact only no part of the decidua is shed at the full term hence this type of placenta is called as non deciduate the next type is syndesmochorial which is found in bovines 
the endometrial epithelium disappears and the chorion is separated from the maternal blood only by the endometrial stroma and the endothelium of the maternal capillaries the next type is endothelial chorion which is found in dogs the fetal chorion erodes the endometrial stroma up to the endothelium of the maternal vessels the next type is hemochorion which is found in the human being here the endothelium of the maternal vessels disappear by the corrosive action of the chorion the maternal blood they directly comes in contact with the chorion and its villi therefore the intervillous space of the human placenta is absolutely fetal or chorionic in development the maternal blood reaches the intervillous space from the uterine vessels by losing the endothelium at the mouth of the vessel in the decidual plate the last variety is the hemoendothelial which is found in the rabbit this is one step more advanced in the development than the human placenta the trophoblastic cells of the chorion they degenerate to such an extent that only the endothelium of the fetal vessels intervenes between the maternal and the fetal blood next we'll see about the placental circulation the maternal blood in the intervillous space the spiral branches of the uterine arteries open into the intervillous space by piercing the basal plate at numerous sites about 200 spiral arteries pierce the basal plate at random sites the mouth of the terminal arteries are lined by hypertrophied endothelial cells which may be replaced by the migration of the cytotrophoblastic cells these cells probably exert a damping effect on the placental circulation by reducing the arterial blood pressure the venous blood of the intervillous space is drained by numerous radicals of the uterine vein which pierce the whole surface of the basal plate according to spanner a marginal sinus is situated at the periphery of the placenta which receives all venous blood of the space most of the workers at present are of opinion that the marginal sinus does not exist at least in human placenta sometimes syncytial sprouts with fragments of nucleated cytoplasm are set free in the intervillous space and they are carried into the maternal circulation via the uterine vein and then may be deposited into the lungs of the mother wherein they usually disappear by the phagocytic activity of the endothelial cells of the pulmonary capillaries it has been estimated that about 1 lakh syncytial sprouts circulate in maternal blood in 24 hours possibly by this process the mother acquires immunological knowledge of the fetal tissue as herself and retains the later until the fetal maturity is reached at term short circuits of blood between the opening of the spiral arteries and the neighboring vein is prevented by higher perfusion pressure of the endometrial artery which drive the blood in spurts at a sufficient force towards the chorionic plate intermittent contraction of the uterine musculature and the fetal pulse in the villi probably assist the circulation in the intervillous space and the press pressure of the blood in the intervillous space is about 15 mm of mercury and it is dependent on uterine contraction next we'll see the fetal blood in the placenta the vascular branching villi arising from each tertiary stem villus ramify in a number of tamper or hollow drum system 
द फर्स्ट ऑर्डर ऑफ ब्रांचिंग विल ब्रेक्स अप इन टू अ नंबर ऑफ सेकेंड ऑर्डर ब्रांचेस विच रन फॉर अ शॉर्ट डिस्टेंस पैरल टू द कोरियानिक प्लेट एंड दे डिवाइड इन टू सीरीज ऑफ थर्ड ऑर्डर ब्रांचेस द ब्रांचेस ऑफ थर्ड ऑर्डर पासिस थ्रू द इंटरविल स्पेसिस Towards towards the basal plate into which they are inserted and they are finally returned to the intervillous space, forming the terminal villus network. The arrangement of the third order branches take place in a circular fashion around the periphery of an imaginary cylindrical core which is villus free. There is one spiral arterial inlet from the maternal side for each tamper system, so that the maternal blood in the basal plate is poured into the villus-free central area of the tamper system. The maternal and the fetal blood stream flow side by side, but in opposite direction. This counter current flow increases the surface area for the exchange of material between the mother and fetus. About 300 ml of fetal blood circulate through the chorionic villi per minute and the pressure of the fetal blood capillary is about 30 mm of mercury.